Today, the FDA approved two new powerful treatments for sickle cell disease. We're joined today by our nine health expert, Dr. Pyle Coley. We want to talk about the treatments, of course, but first we need to understand more about sickle cell. And this does disproportionately affect people of color more than anybody else. It absolutely does. So sickle cell is an inherited disease. And it basically means the gene for hemoglobin, hemoglobin is a protein in our red blood cells that carries oxygen mix it so that your hemoglobin's shape is wrong. So the cells, instead of being round and sort of flexible where they can go through the blood vessels without a problem, they become sickled like a sickle, get caught in blood vessels, causing pain crises, get caught in our spleen, causing increased risk of infection. There's no cure and there's no real treatment for it. Before we go to these uh, new improvements and these approvals, I'm just curious, why does this you know, affect the black community more so. I feel like I always Google that and I never get a straight yeah. answer from the Google machine. So can you help me out here? Yes, in fact, the way that it evolved was that it was a protective mechanism. So we know that malaria is endemic mm -hmm. in Africa and having sickle cells can protect your cells from malaria because malaria can affect our red blood cells. So it evolved as a way, the sickle cell trait was one of the two bad copies evolved as a way to sort of protect us from malaria. But then it kind of went awry and especially here in the United States where we don't have a lot of malaria, it's just causing trouble. So that's why we see it more in black Americans and Hispanic right. Americans rather than Caucasians or East Asians. Okay. So let's talk about this treatment and this is considered a milestone. There's some really cool technology behind this. Very cool technology and it really is a milestone because now we're talking about a cure for an illness which we had nothing for mm -hmm. and we're talking about opening the door for other types of illnesses, genetic and non-genetic, to be treated with genetic modification. So basically what this does, if it was a sci-fi movie like Gattaca, <laughs> Ooh, I love they that would movie. make this movie, right? It, it edits your genes. So it takes a patient that has sickle cell anemia, takes out their stem cells. Now remember, stem cells can turn into any type of blood cell, takes out your own stem cells, then kills your bone marrow. So it gives you chemotherapy to destroy sort of any remnant stem cells that might be there, modifies those stem cells that it took out using this CRISPR technology where you can put a typo into a gene, basically, and turn it into a dud gene, or you can replace it with a different gene. The future. Exactly. <laughs> That's incredible. And so the new gene makes proper hemoglobin, and then they give you back your stem cells, and then it repopulates, basically, your blood count. So wow. very incredible, very Gattaca-like, for right. sure. So you're literally editing genes, then how does that work with the drugs? So the drugs are the ones that cause the editing of the genes because they have, they basically have the technology that allows the gene to swap out. Now think about obviously the risks of the whole process. You have to kill your entire bone marrow. So it's almost like getting a stem cell transplant. It's your own stem cells back to you that are edited, but you can certainly have side effects from the chemotherapy. There was also black box warning on one of the drugs because a patient developed a blood cancer. Mm -hmm. Now when you're editing genes, if the editing goes wrong, you're trying to put in a typo, but you put in the wrong typo, it can involve into something concerning like mm. cancer. So we have to watch out for all this. We have to watch these patients over time. But in the sickle cell community, this has been a game changer and people are celebrating today because they now have something they can reach for. And a lot of these people were dying from their disease, dying early, mm. unable to have children. And now by doing this kind of technology, you've really opened up the door for them. It sounds so exciting, but it is so expensive. That price tag above two million dollars for three million one million treatment. Dollars. Who can afford that? Two to three million dollars per treatment. So <sighs> today it's expensive, but again, I'm really hopeful that this has opened the door, not just for this in sickle cell anemia, but even in heart disease. There was a recent data presented at the American Heart Association where they edited your cholesterol-making genes. And so instead of taking a cholesterol pill every day, you could just edit your genes early in life and mm. turn off the cholesterol making gene for life. So I'm hopeful as this kind of makes its way into mainstream, the price tag comes down and we learn a little bit more about the safety. Yeah, hopefully sooner rather than later. And now I have to go watch Gattaca, so thank you for that. <laughs> I haven't seen the movie in so it's long. Like we're it's all becoming so robots. good. I know, seriously. Uh, Dr. Coley, thank you as always.